Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Mohammad Sohrab and you are watching Evolve Search Virtual Learning guys today we will discuss about dialogue security what actually dialogue security is dialogue security is a security which can be converted into common stock okay and once we convert it into common stock it will decline earning per share okay this is the basic definition of dilutive security okay dilutive security consists on options warrants and convertible bonds okay these are the financial instruments and we can convert these financial instrument into common stock okay and once we convert these instrument into common stock it will increase shares outstanding okay let's understand the basic concept behind uh, dilutive security okay guys we have two option to finance our assets okay we have two option to finance our asset one is equity option and then second is liability option okay equity mean when we generate or when we finance our assets by the investment of owners okay and then second source is when we take loans when we uh, borrow loan and when we issue convertible bonds so we can generate financing okay for our assets so like if a firm has newly entered into market okay then it will be difficult for it to finance its assets through liability source okay to the source of liabilities why because no one will ready to trust that firm and no one will ready to give a loan to that firm okay so in this case mostly firms issue dilutive security okay dilutive security actually is financial instrument which which provide option to the lender that he can convert that bond that loan into common stock it gave option to the lender of that loan that he can convert that loan into a uh, common stock in after a specific period in the future okay so so in future that person can convert that loan into ownership okay so this is how companies make their financial instruments more attractive to the investor uh, investor get attracted to the instrument and they start investing in the firm okay this is why this is how and this is why firms issue dilutive security okay what will be happen if a firm issued dilutive security okay let's check its impact what will happen if a firm issued dilutive security and what will be happen once that person will convert that dilutive security into common stock so conversion is called as dilution okay and once a person convert that loan that convertible bond into common stock it will decline the earning per share why share outstanding will increase once that person will convert his bond into stock definitely company will issue some stock to that person so that's why the outstanding shares will increase okay so once outstanding share will increase it will decline earning per share of the company so guys once we convert dilutive security into common stock there will be two impacts okay one is it will increase numerator okay numerator mean it will increase income we will see how it will increase income okay and then second impact will be it will increase denominator as well okay denominator mean shares outstanding dilutive security will convert into common stock company will further issue some sh some shares okay so number of outstanding shares will increase once we 
convert dilutive security into common stock okay let's understand its uh, basic concept of uh, dilutive security guys once dilutive security convert into common stock it will increase numerator here is numerator numerator mean income okay why numerator will increase because we are going to add back interest expense which we are saving because that debt has been converted into equity okay now debt has been converted it into equity now you don't need to pay interest expense okay so now you are saving this interest expense and this interest expense will be added into your income you are paying this interest expense on debt okay and now that debt has been converted into equity so you don't need to pay this interest expense and this interest expense will be added here in income okay so your numerator will increase okay guys once you have a debt okay normally when whenever you uh, we have normally whenever we have a bond or debt okay so we have to pay interest expense right so now that bond or that debt has been converted okay so no so no need to pay interest expense this is the feature of dilutive security when dilutive security will convert from debt to equity so you secure interest expense okay because when you have uh, issued dilutive security you promise that person that he can convert it into equity after a specific period of time okay so now when that person will convert that debt into equity so you don't need to pay interest expense okay so you are securing interest expense and this interest expense will be added into your income so this was the impact on numerator i said you earlier that denominator will also increase okay why denominator increase this is the de 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 denominator okay why it will increase because we are issuing new share to our shareholders okay so the number of outstanding share will increase okay so here we will add new shares which we issue to our which we which we issue to the person who is converting his dilutive security into common stock which we have promised earlier when we make this contract and when we said that that person will convert that dilutive security and we will issue him specific number of shares okay so it is depend on company how much share it will issue against the debt so here denominator will also increase okay so here we will add new shares which we have issued to the person who has converted his dilutive security okay so it is the concept of dilutive security that once we convert dilutive security into shares it will increase your numerator okay we have seen it here and it will increase your denominator we have seen it here okay okay guys we have added here our interest expense but one thing we have not uh, uh, included here that is tax expenditure okay the, you have not paid tax expense on this interest expense why because this interest expense deduct earlier than payment of because this interest expense paid earlier than payment of uh, tax expense okay we, we deduct this amount earlier before making the payment of tax expense so that's why this from this amount we have not deducted our tax expenditure okay so fee we will add we so we will deduct that ex tax ex expenditure out of this amount okay guys yes, this is how uh, your balance income statement represent and this calculation okay you have uh, income before interest interest and uh, tax okay you then first of all you pay your interest expense okay so this is the amount on which tax has not deducted why because it has already deducted before making the payment of tax okay so we we deduct tax on 
income before tax amount okay so the interest expense has already deducted and it is deducted before the deduction of tax expense that's why here we add this interest expense and now this interest expense now this amount has not deducted uh, tax expense okay on this amount we have not deducted tax expense that's why we will deduct tax expense okay how we deduct it okay guys so this is the amount on which interest tax has not deducted okay so what you will do you will deduct the percentage of tax out of one one is your total this amount okay so this is 100 percent okay now the percentage of tax will deduct out of it okay then we will multiply it with the interest amount so remaining amount will be added into your income okay so now this or oh, this is not a pure amount okay this is your income is pure because tax has already deducted but on this amount tax has not deducted for for that we will uh, do this exercise okay so uh, once we do this your tax will deduct out of it and remaining amount will be added into your income so guys let's do this with an example okay and let's know how we can do this okay okay guys let's understand it okay so here is here is your company okay your company has net income one like twenty thousand and it has 30,000 outstanding shares okay that mean we will divide we will distribute this one like 20,000 into 30,000 shares okay but after a specific period and your company has issued one like debt at 6% interest okay and that will be converted into 10,000 share after a specific period of time okay so once you convert this uh, debt into common stock you will provide that person 10,000 shares okay whenever you will provide 10,000 share this will increase your outstanding shares okay your outstanding shares was 30,000 and when these this bond will convert into debt into uh, and and when this uh, debt will convert into uh, common stock it will further increase your 10,000 shares so your outstanding shares will be 40,000 once it convert okay so let's understand what is our earning per share before converting this debt okay before converting this debt what is our earning per share how much we are earning on per share okay so uh, our earning per share is so how will we calculate earning per share okay for that we will divide our income with outstanding shares okay before converting this debt we are actually want to know what is the earning per share what is our basic earning per share okay so here our income is one like twenty thousand okay and we will divide it with uh, thirty thousand okay so let's understand it one like twenty thousand and we will divide it with thirty thousand so right now we are earning four per share okay okay guys so now owners are earning four per share okay okay and now what we will do now we want to convert this one leg into 10,000 shares okay so let's understand what will be its effect on owners earning okay right now owners are earning four per share okay earning per share is four rupees okay so owners are earning four rupees against each share okay right now so what will happen once we convert this one leg debt into common stock so once we convert it 10,000 further share will be added here so definitely our denominator will increase okay denominator will increase so let's check its effect what will happen 
oh yes yeah, first of all we have to uh, calculate how much interest we are right now paying okay before converting it let's understand how much interest we are paying so our debt amount is one like okay we are paying six percent interest and interest is six thousand okay so as i said you earlier when debt will convert into equity so you don't need to pay this interest you will secure this amount okay so how much you will secure you will secure six thousand okay so let's add let add this six thousand into your net income because you have saved this amount and now you are not paying this amount because this uh, amount has converted into common stock this this amount has converted into common stock you don't need to pay interest expense on this amount okay so we are securing this 6000 okay how will we add this 6000 our income is so we are adding this 6000 again into this amount okay but we are not securing this full 6000 why because on this amount we have not paid tax so how will we deduct tax we will deduct tax out of it okay what is the percentage of tax tax is 40 percent as we seen here tax is 40 percent of outstanding shares before converting it was 30,000 okay now further some shares were converted okay and number of shares which were converted are 10,000 as we have paid 10,000 share okay okay here 10,000 further share were added into uh, our existing shares okay why because we have issued uh, 10,000 shares against that debt which right now converted into uh, uh, common stock okay so once debt converted you pay tax you pay interest on debt so now you will not pay now you will not pay now you don't need to pay uh, that interest expense okay now you are securing that interest expense so the amount of interest expense is 6000 and this amount will add it back to your income okay but total in full interest is not added why because on interest amount you have not paid tax so how this is how you deduct your tax out of it okay so this is 6000 full amount this is one okay then we will deduct 40 percent so 40 percent about will be goes to tax okay in the form of tax and 60 percent will remain into your net income so let's understand how much it become right now okay okay guys you have secured 3600 okay out of this 6000 you have just secured uh, 3600 why because 2400 goes into tax in the form of tax okay you have paid tax amount okay now this is the amount which is pure which is out of tax okay so this amount will be added into your net income okay and now your earning per share is 3.09 okay your earning per share has declined it was 4 before converting diluted security it was 4 now it is 3.09 so this is one of the feature or this is one of the condition of dilutive security that whenever it will convert into common stock it will decline your earning per share okay so here our earning per share has declined into 3.09 okay so this is how we actually calculate it okay before converting dilutive security we will have uh, 30,000 outstanding shares okay and we have promised that person if that person convert his debt into uh, common stock we will issue him 10,000 share or okay when he have converted his debt into security we have paid uh, 10,000 share okay so here our outstanding share were increased from 30,000 to 40,000 okay and on this amount we have, we were paid tax we have paid uh, on this amount we have paid interest expense and once it has converted into equity definitely we don't need to pay it for an hour interest expense okay so we have scored our interest expense and that amount has been added here into your uh, net income okay
okay guys so here in this scenario there was no prefer stock okay so here in this case there was no prefer stock okay so in this company there was no prefer stock if there is prefer stock then what we will do then we detect that prefer stock out of it okay then then we deduct prefer stock here uh, before distributing that amount into uh, common stock okay before distributing that amount into common stock holders what we will do we will deduct prefer stock here okay so we will uh, uh, deduct prefer stock out of it then we will add interest expense okay so here it is there is no prefer stock and it is the condition of prefer stock holders that whenever company make income first of all it will uh, pay to their prefer stock holders okay once it paid to prefer stock holders then it will distribute it into common stock holders okay so there is no uh, prefer stock holders so i have not deducted it if there is prefer stock then what you will do you will just deduct that amount from here okay you will uh, put a uh, minus sign here and we, you will deduct the amount of prefer stock out of it then you will distribute that amount into common stock okay guys this was uh, from today's session we will discuss new set a new lecture we will discuss new topic in in our new lecture